In Kings chapter 4, this sermon is going to be a little bit different uh, because I'm going to be reading more scripture than anything because what I love about this story is it uh, and we're following a person and we're following a person's faith from beginning to end and in that process we see God's wonderful faithfulness but wasn't God just being faithful, uh, just to be faithful uh, for faithful's sake? <clears throat> but what we see is God's faithfulness to someone who made decisions to be faithful. And that triggered God's blessing upon their life, even in their future. It's been said it's not uh, unusual for God to guide an entire family by his word uh, to one person. When God gives you guidance, remember that your faithfulness and obedience may determine the protection and well-being and blessing on your life. That is a powerful thought this evening, and I want to stay with that thought and uh, look at someone's life and how what I just read to you was so key in this person's life uh, because of decisions they made over and over again to remain faithful to God and to remain faithful to the things of God. I entitled this sermon, God's Faithfulness to the Faithful. Read with me out of 2 Kings chapter 4. And we want to start with verse 8 tonight. It says uh, this, Now it happened one day that Elijah went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food, so it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us on a regular basis. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall, and let us put a bed for him there, and a table and a chair, and a lampstand, so it will be whenever he comes to us, we he can turn in there. God's faithfulness to the faithful. First thing I'm going to look at tonight is attitude, actions, and faith. Attitude and our actions and faith will go a long way in the kingdom of God. A person's attitude about God and serving God really does make a difference. It goes a long way in life. When you look and talk to anybody who has lived for God for a long period of time, you would be wise to ask them, how did they get there? Or tell me your journey. Or what kept you going? Why are you so blessed? And they'll be able to tell you uh, it is because of, of simply having faith uh, and because I stuck with God uh, and my attitude, I kept my attitude right with God. Uh, it was God that had blessed me, God that helped me through it all, uh, that in serving God, it was your attitude and your actions and your faith uh, that would make all the difference in the world. God wants and God can bring guidance and blessing and direction to a person's life. This is something God wants to do. This is something God can do, but much of it depends on the person's attitude about God and a person's attitude about serving God. Can I hear you say amen? I just want to make sure you're awake tonight. People that value or desire spiritual things bring tremendous blessing to one's life. People who don't miss out on many things that God wants to do in their life and many spiritual blessings on their life, even an inheritance that God would love to give a destiny that God would have for them simply because they simply don't desire this. I talked about this a little bit this morning, about really not desiring about the things of God, not really desiring the will of God, not really caring about those powerful moments 
moments, uh, those God moments they have with God, they simply cast those aside, uh, missing out on a tremendous blessing and guidance uh, and destiny that God would have for their life. This woman in our text uh, and her husband uh, is a pic they are a picture of someone uh, going all out for God. And I love their attitude and their disposition. And that's what truly shines in this story and in this text. We read that they invite the men of God into their home. They invite the men of God into their lives and with a good and a right attitude and spirit. When you read it, it's like it's kind of convicting, isn't it? Just by their attitude, their spirit about this man of God, the way they open up their lives and open up their homes to him, such a good spirit that it can be actually kind of convicting, candid. Amen. They go a step further. They make a special room. They provided food, a bed, a table, and a chair, and a lamp, and they provide all this for the men of God. And what you see here is they provided for the work for the work of God. It's such a beautiful thing to behold and to watch and to see. The way they do this so willingly, uh, so full of faith, uh, so full of uh, 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 generosity, that they, they're not issues. It's not like pulling teeth uh, to get them to do something nice uh, uh, for the man of God or try to force someone uh, to do something for God or to serve God uh, or to give to the kingdom of God. Uh, they so willingly do this. It's such a wonderful picture uh, of hearts that love God, hearts that are surrendered to whatever the will of God is for their life. And they provide for the work of God. And I love that. And as you continue reading the story about this couple, it's amazing because it's a picture of as one sows their life for the things of God, that God sees this and he blesses this. And we read, as we continue reading, we see that they reap what they have sown. Simply because they had done this, God turned that act of devotion back on them. Verse 11 through 17, one day he came there and turned into the upper room and lay down to rest. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite, so he called her, and she stood before him, and now he said to Gehazi, say to her now, you have gone to all this trouble for us. What can I do for you? Would you like to be mentioned to the king or to the captain of the army? And so she answered, I live among my own people in peace and security and no need for special favors. I'm doing okay. No worries. Later, Elijah said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, call her. So Gehazi called her, and she came and stood in the doorway. Elijah said, at this season next year, you will embrace a son. She said, no, my lord, O oh, man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But a woman conceived and gave birth to a son. At that season, the next year, just as Elijah had said to her. I love that. Isn't that wonderful? Let me tell you something. God wants to be a great blessing to us. God wants to and delights in blessing his people. He wants to bring and add blessing upon our lives, and sometimes we miss that. Sometimes we forget how good and how wonderful God is. And what a picture this is of how God is blessing this couple. He wants to bless this couple. That's the uh, heart of God. He wants 
to care for his people. He doesn't just want to judge us. And many times people think, oh, God is, he just judges, judges, judges. No, he doesn't. He does judge certain things, sin and so forth. He judges sinners and their sin. But when it comes to God's people, his desire is to bless. But if you're living in sin, yes, he's going to judge that. That's not what I mean. But we forget about the heart of God, that when someone serves the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, God's desire is to bless them. She's not even looking for it, but still nonetheless, there is a blessing, a very tangible blessing upon her life. God is rewarding her heart and her spirit. One commentator, one commentary said this, the woman who so generously provided material things for the prophet of God is now blessed by the God of the prophet, blessed beyond material things. Amen. What a nice picture, huh? And you have to think tonight, I wonder, how many people did Elijah pass by? Day after day, night after night, because he would go to Mount Carmel, and then he would travel to cities to minister, and all the way was the, this city that she was in. It was like the perfect uh, stopping point to rest, and so on and so forth. So everybody knew who this prophet was. They knew exactly who he was. They had heard stories about this man. But yet, in a whole city, only one person took the time to investigate and to get involved and to be a blessing to the work of God. And I wonder, day after day, no one else took the time to even notice or want to get involved. And no one opened up their lives to the man of God. No one opened up their homes to him. Why? Many had the same opportunity to do it. And to have blessing in and on their lives. And when you think about it, how many missed that opportunity of tremendous blessing. The opportunity to serve in the kingdom of God. Think about it. The privilege of just having a meal with Elijah. The great Elijah. Can you imagine having coffee with this prophet? Twice the anointing of Elijah. Twice the miracles. I don't know about you, but I'd be rubbing his robe. But can I get a little of that? Amen. Everybody needs blessing in their life. Amen. But yet, can you imagine missing the opportunity just to talk to this man? Perhaps even becoming a servant of Elijah. Maybe the next Elijah in line after Elijah passes away. What an opportunity to get personal direction for your life. All the benefits of serving God, the things they could have had and learned, but they missed their opportunity. Amen. It's like trying to get people to serve God. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth. And I scratch my head. Why is it hard to get people to serve God? Don't they see? Don't they understand the tremendous blessing of, of surrendering their life to uh, surrendering their hearts to Jesus Christ uh, and having God's grace in their life, uh, God flowing in their life, uh, God moving in their life, uh, uh, God's protection? I, I don't understand. They simply don't care. They simply don't want it. And I find it interesting out of all the people in a city. One couple decided to do something. Missed opportunity. I'm going to look at, secondly, tragedy in life. Or the tragedy of life. And you know, to be honest with you, that is just the reality of life. You know, we've passed a very challenging year, 2020. Many people died. 
people that we knew. I was talking to Mr. Barger at Safe Park the other day, the other week actually. He's had COVID twice. And he just doesn't look, he doesn't look that great. And I don't mean physically, but there's something on his face that has changed. He, used, he works two jobs. He's also a junior high school teacher. He teaches water polo. He teaches boxing, and he works at Safe Mart. This guy is incredible. He's in his 60s or close to 60. Yeah. And, you know, he was an incredible individual. But, boy, he is not the same man. He is the shell of who he used to be. And I was talking to him, and he says, I have lost five personal friends to COVID. And so he doesn't have that uh, uh, confidence anymore that he used to have. He's realizing that, you know, life is short. And the reality is, is there is tragedy in life. Here we read in our story in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 18, that tragedy strikes even this wonderful couple. It says this, when the child was grown, the day came that he went out to his father, to the reapers. But he said to his father, my head, my head. The man said to his servant, carry him to his mother. When he had carried and brought him to his mother, he sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. Some say, heat stroke. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door of the small upper room behind him and left. Then she called to her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys so that I may run to the man of God and return. He said, Why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon or the Sabbath. She said, It will be all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive the animal fast. Do not slow down the pace. For me, unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her at a distance, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is a Shunammite woman. Please run now to meet her and ask her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. When she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she took hold of his feet to Gehazi approached to push her away, but the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is desperate and troubled within her, and the Lord has hidden the reason from me, and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask for a son from my Lord? Did I not say, Do not give me false hope? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and prepare now, and take my staff in your hand and go to the woman's house. Very interesting how she is struck with tragedy. And most people, when they are struck with tragedy, they just lose it, don't they? Which is normal. I mean, I'm not saying anything wrong with that. I mean, people deal with things in different ways. But what is so interesting about her is she doesn't, she doesn't lose it. She seems to gain clarity. She seems to have the ability to compose herself. And what she does is she focuses, she says, there's no one who's going to be able to help me in my situation, my tragic situation, but God. And so I must go to the man of God. And she focuses all her attention upon seeing the man of God, seeking him out, and seeking him for direction, for help, for whatever God may speak into her life. She doesn't make excuses. She doesn't make a, you know, well, I'm going to go get drunk because, you know what, I deserve it. This is, this is a tragedy. Continue 2 Kings 4.32. When Elisha came into the house, the child was dead, lying on his bed. So he went in, shut the door behind the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay on the child and put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he stretched himself out on him and held him, the boy's skin became warm. Then he returned and walked in the house 
once back and forth and went up again and stretched himself out on him. And the boy sneezed seven times and he opened his eyes and Elijah called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her and when she came to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing herself to the ground in respect and gratitude. And she picked up her son. God does miracles for the faithful. God has no problem moving quickly for the faithful. Amen. God will help his faithful in hard or tragic times. You know, very challenging 2020, and you know what's amazing. The sister was talking to her a few months, a few months back, and people were really going through a lot of challenges. And she says, "You know, Pastor, it's incredible. God is incredibly faithful. I am so blessed. It blows my mind. This is a this is a very faithful woman. God has no problem moving." the miraculous for the faithful. Amen. I want to look at the obedient very quickly tonight as we finish or conclude. The obedience that preserves. God watches over and takes care of the obedient. How many know that it's not always easy obeying God? Amen. Let me get you to hear you say amen. The reality is, it's not always easy obeying God. It can be very challenging at times, especially when it doesn't make sense. Amen? <laughs> Here in 2 Kings chapter 8, things have shifted in the nation. It's four chapters later. And uh, God is going to be doing some things uh, in this nation. He's going to deal with this nation. And so, you know, Elijah is incredibly in touch with God. So Elijah knows what's going to happen. And so what Elijah does, he makes a special trip to her home and he tells her something and gives her direction for her life. Let's pick that up in 2 Kings chapter 8. Now Elijah had said to the Shunammite, woman whose son he had restored to life, prepare and go, you and your household, and stay temporarily wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine, and moreover, it will come on the land and continue for seven years. So the woman set out and did everything in accordance with the word of the man of God. She and her household went and stayed temporarily as foreigners in the land of the Philistines seven years. Now, you know, you and I would think to ourselves, well, this is really no big deal. Yeah, you know, it's the man of God, you know. He's telling us something. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we just get up and go, right? You know, sometimes it's not always that easy. Think about this. This is a house. A pro a probably a very nice house that they've built rooms and they have decent money where they can live just fine. They're living very well. Uh, most commentators say, commentaries say. And then all of a sudden, their prophet begins to say, you know what, you need to leave. There's going to be a famine in the land. And you know, that's not an easy thing for a woman to do, is to leave her home just like that. You have memories built into that home, years of living in that home. There's memories. There's all kinds of things that you have collected. You know how it gets when you're, let's say, your mother and father, they're in a house for many years. They have all these wonderful things. They're just not going to abandon that. It's not an easy thing. It's not as easy as we would think it would be. 
and think about it, they're financially, they're doing just fine. They're probably thinking, you know what, we have no need to leave. Uh, even if there's a famine, we have plenty of resources. Uh, uh, you know, this is probably going on in their mind. But nonetheless, they understand something. That when God speaks, you need to obey. Even if it isn't easy.
it's very interesting because as she's as Gehazi is telling the king about the story about his son being her son being raised from the dead. This is so powerful about God; He can turn a tragic situation and turn it out and change it and, and, and cause it to be a blessing. The death of the boy turned out to be a blessing. That's what God can do. Because the story apparently was spread everywhere. Elijah raised the dead. This boy became famous. It's a picture of what God can do, how God can turn a circumstance. All these things happened because of a person, a woman, who valued spiritual things. I want you to think about that. All these things transpired and happened in her life because she valued spiritual things. She valued a relationship with God. More than anything else in life, that's why these things happened in her life. So if you and I would continue to value spiritual things in our life, if you and I continue to value our relationship with God, God will move for us like he did this morning. And even more so. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe that? I would like every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God tonight. Just for a few more moments to give you an opportunity to pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to God. Amen. Perhaps you're here this evening and your life is not surrendered to God. You can honestly say that, you know what, things in life have been tragic because you have not valued spiritual things. You have not valued a relationship with God. As a matter of fact, you have cast that aside. It is of no interest to you. And the reason why there are things happening in your life and there is no blessing on your life is simply that because you have not valued spiritual things. You have not valued a relationship with God. You have not valued something that God is offering every individual, and that is the salvation of their soul. And tonight, you realize that you are missing the most important thing in life, and that is to be forgiven of your sin and to have a relationship with God. You want to rectify that tonight. You want to change that tonight. You want to surrender your heart to Jesus. Amen. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I'd like you to do one thing. I'd like you to lift up your hand, signifying, yes, Pastor, will you pray with me? I want to give my life to Jesus. Amen. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Amen. Anybody in this place tonight? Amen. We can pray. Your heart linked up with God again. Maybe you're out there in live stream and maybe you're watching this sermon and that's you. God is ministering to you. You realize the reason why uh, all kinds of crazy things are happening in your life and that you don't have the blessing of God on your life is because you have not valued spiritual things. You have not valued uh, salvation that God offers every individual. But tonight you realize that uh, that, if, that you need to give your life to Jesus. And so what I want you to do is I want you to bow your head and I want you to repeat this prayer that I'm going to pre repeat to you. And I'd like you to repeat it where you are as well. And so I would like you to bow your head and say these words. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I surrender my heart to you. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I will serve you and I will live for you. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me of my sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Contact me via email or telephone, cell phone. Uh, if you have any questions, we're here to help you. We're here to be a blessing to you. Thank you.
for salvation. Amen. I want to continue, change the um, uh, appeal this evening. Maybe you're here this evening, and maybe, maybe, maybe you haven't really been as faithful to God as you know you should have been. And you realize tonight where you're missing things or missing, you know, uh, missing the understanding of God's grace and God's blessing on your life. That it is triggered by our faithfulness to God. It's triggered by valuing our relationship with God, valuing spiritual things, and then desiring them. That's where the blessing comes. That's where the miracles come, is when we do that, when we make a decision that we are going to value the things that God values, value the things that God uh, would have us value in life. And maybe you've just been missing that. Maybe your focus has been elsewhere in life. But tonight you realize that you need to refocus your life, refocus your value of things. And we want to do that this evening. So what we want to do is we want to open up the altar for a few moments so you can pray. So you can talk to God and let him minister to you. So let's stand to our feet. The altars are open. If you want to come and spend some time with God tonight and talk to him about the things that he spoke to you about during this sermon. Amen. As we play a chorus, the altars are open for prayer. Come and spend some time with God. Hallelujah. Open your hearts to God. precious souls around your people, God, minister to them, quicken them, O oh God, in their heart and in their mind by the Holy Ghost, O oh Lord God. God, that we would value spiritual things, God, the things of God, the purposes of you, O oh God, the, 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 the things of God, amen. Shanda, baby, baby, Shanda, Shanda Ridi Shanda Shanda Ridi Shanda Baba 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 Shanda. 
directing us, God, and helping us all the way, Lord God. We pray, God, that your hand be upon us as we leave this place. Father, that you would uh, use our lives to minister to others, to bring others to righteousness, Lord God, through our testimonies, through our lives, Father. We pray and we ask this in Jesus' name.